Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're gonna be visiting the old leg locks of judo and Japanese jujitsu and compare them with the leg locks of sambo. So, when it comes to sambo, torsions are illegal, so they had to get far more creative in the classical leg locks, and today we're gonna see variations of the classical ones, and I find them rather very interesting, and also go through the old leg locks of uh, judo. So, the first one is your classical straight uh, footlock. However, the sambists have their what is called the grapevine, where I do believe in IBJJF, it is illegal. Uh, here you see you entangle the legs uh, completely and rather than putting them on the outside, like what is called a 50-50, you actually entangle the legs and lock the hips so they do not escape. So uh, in terms of breaking the mechanism, you need to use the bone of the wrist where the forearm, or I'm sorry, where the fist is pointing uh, downwards, so like a hammer fist, and on the Achilles tendon, you don't have to retract your back completely, uh, all you need to do is just uh, retract your shoulders and also finish the braking mechanism by lifting your hands upward. So you have two options, either you retract back, extend your hips and retract your shoulders, or you can do it seated as you are seeing here. So uh, straight ankle locks are very old. You can see it here from the old Jujutsu days. Uh, notice the grip where you are doing what is called a Kimura grip and the leg is crossed. All you need to do is just squeeze your palms and the braking mechanism is efficient. Another one here is you see Mitsuyo Maeda doing the same thing where he is entangling the legs. Notice how his leg is blocking the hips and his forearm bone is actually uh, on the lower part of the calf, which is a calf crush. Here is another one by Yukio Tani. Um, the same thing with the grip. And also with this type of grip where the palm is down, um, you can actually get away with it while you are standing up because the lever is far shorter. Now here, when it comes to laying down with the palm up, you grip your jacket, you need to extend backwards in order to finish. You put your legs on the on the hips and it's finished. This one here is also from Kawaishi's book. Um, it's an out inside uh, ankle lock. Uh, notice the uh, entanglement of the legs. You just retract backwards like the arrow says and you finish it. But you don't have to always retract because here where the fist is downward like a hammer fist you don't have to actually go backwards um, all you need to do is just finish it as you are sitting and here is a great example of it notice the fist and you just finish it as you are sitting which is a great way of doing it not a lot of people do it this way but it's very effective um, let's see it here one more time this is what is called the grapevine and then you just target the Achilles and then slightly extend your hips and retract your shoulders and you get the tap. Next is your knee bar. Now, the knee bar was invented in the 1920s in the judo days, so it did not have that much time to develop. Here you see Kanemitsu, the inventor himself. Um, this is a very classical way of doing the knee bar where you grip the tendon, the Achilles tendon by your hands and then pull towards you and then extend your hips only putting pressure on the knee so however uh, I did find this uh, variation by Vlad to be very interesting this is from half guard you do a knee bar with your legs so uh, as they are trying to pass your half guard you hook the leg uh, with your arm and then uh, put them up uh, exposing the knee on to your crotch area or your hips and then you just lock the lower part of the leg with your own legs and then just uh, extend uh, your hips doing a knee bar so it's an inverted knee bar uh, from the half guard or a deep half guard what is called today so it's a very interesting variation of the knee bar that i found next is your calf slice or calf crush here you see you figure for the legs extend uh, and pull with the back of the collar so it's called ashi hisa hishigi which means 
uh, knee crushing because it can damage the knee as you see you figure for the legs and then you press down extending the toes it is incredibly painful it's great for arrests but uh, in terms of competition obviously you have to get more creative and this one uh, really uh, took my attention you see you insert your hand or your wrist uh, between the calf and the hamstring and then you get super close and then you put your legs on them and then extend and pull your your hands together like you're doing an Achilles lock and it's very painful and very effective and very creative I've never seen this before jiu-jitsu guys um, if it's being done today or someone uh, is a specialist in this I would like to know who it is please let me know down below so here you see you actually rotate your palm downwards to put all the bone uh, on the muscles so it can create a far more painful submission or you can put your uh, fist down but here you see you put your palm down to have more bone exposure on the muscles next and it would, which is the king of kings ashi garami so in the old judo and jiu-jitsu days you can do it standing up here you see it's a photo of the demonstration you finish the lock by actually pulling the sleeve towards you uh, putting a lot of pressure on the knee so basically it's more of a leg lock the knee uh, but also you can target the hips with ashi garami here it's being done from a mount position um, you extend your legs and you sink your hips down and you open them up causing uh, the hips to be under a lot of pressure it's also a variation of ashi garami but in judo the more the most famous variation is of course from the kata from the failed moenage extending the leg and then uh, entangling the leg and pulling the sleeve towards you and extending your leg to attack the knee so here you see fail to moenage you get deep underneath them so this is it you get deep underneath you in you push the leg with your own leg to make them off balance and then you entangle the leg and pull the sleeve towards you while extending your leg to get the tap another way of doing it uh, in sambo the hip lock is actually by pulling the far knee towards you which will put pressure on the knee but it's more on the hips and it's very painful and at the same time you extend your legs it's not much of a knee lock but it's more of a hip lock then this next one is the classical where you pull the sleeve like a rope as he is explaining and then extending your leg which will put a lot of pressure on the knee and at the same time on the lower back it's very painful and very uh, effective so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon for exclusive content uh, the link will be in the description this was shady and thank you for listening